Okay, now we're going to look at uh, the pre-launch video number two, PLC number two of Will Hamilton with his fuzzy yellow balls. This is his Tennis Ninja launch. And I went through these details um, in, the, in the first video when I broke down his first PLC. But he had a basically a 17,000 person list, did $168,000 in sales, which is wonderful. And Will has got, quickly gotten better with these launches. He's, he did this launch. He, when he did this launch, he only owned Procter Lunch Formula for less than a year. So very highly successful launch. Uh, a few things before we dig into this and go through the video. First of all, um, you, Will, one of the things he does in his videos really, really well is he builds authority. And part of his positioning, his authority is his access to the pros and his access as a credentialed media at the top level of the game. But the thing to remember is that he created that authority through his launches. He wasn't a member of the media. He, you know, wasn't a recognized person person until he started doing these launches and started having real success, starting to build up a lot of views on YouTube. So he basically created the, this authority through his launches. So that's a big thing to remember. Now you should definitely watch his PLC number one, the video I shot about that. Uh, I broke that down. I thought his PLC number one was brilliant. There, it, it, he just did a fantastic job of building authority and describing what this entire video course was going to be about and why you needed, as a tennis player, you would need to watch this entire video series. So he did an incredibly wonderful job. This second video, I don't think is quite as powerful. Uh, and, and that's it's not unusual that you know you're not always going to hit a home run you're not always going to hit a grand slam you're not always going to do your absolute best work or have your absolute best video and i think in every launch i've had i've had you know one video that stood head and shoulders above the others and one that might might not be as good so i don't think this one is quite up to the standards of the first video but it's still very strong the where this one is really really strong is in the uh, in the teaching portion I think there's excellent teaching in here there's teaching as I was going through this video as a tennis player myself as I was going through this video preparing to share with you what's going on I found myself watching the content and not wanting to fast forward through the content because it's really really solid so I think the teaching portion the content portion in the middle is particularly strong I think the open is not quite as strong and uh, the close probably wasn't quite as strong. There isn't as much foreshadowing of the next video throughout here, uh, but it's still, it's a very good video. I'm, I'm nitpicking. I just don't, th you know, that first one was spectacular. I don't think this one is quite as spectacular, but it's still very, very strong. And, in, in a, I mean, how, how can you argue with $168,000 in sales to a 17,000 person list? Not bad. So let's get to the video now. Hey everybody, Will Hamilton here, and welcome to... And so right off the bat, you'll notice one of the things he does, he welcomes people to the video, and he thanks people for the comments. And so, it, it, you know, he ended the last one asking people for comments, so it's great to thank people for the comments starting right off. To the second free video in our four-part training series, first I want to thank everybody who left comments on the first video. And before we get to today's lesson, we're going to do... So, it, you know, it's great. In, the very, in those first few seconds, he talks about it being a multi-part series of videos, a four-part series of videos, and he thanks people for the comments. Probably could have thanked people in a more, you know, a more direct way, saying thanks for all the comments about such and such. It was great reading them. Really enjoyed getting those comments. I was in there, you know, answering. You, you probably noticed me in there answering a lot of the comments. Yeah, you could have blown it out a little bit more, but that's fine. Okay, so now he goes into, um, this is a part I ab actually don't really love. He's, he goes into talking about the video camera and the video equipment that, that they use to shoot these videos at the events. And really what this does is it does re build real authority. It shows that they're, that he's got a serious business, that FuzzyYellowBalls.com is a serious business. They've got serious equipment. They're real pros. They know what they're doing. 
and uh, which is fine um, but I think you know throughout this video there's a little bit too much emphasis on this so here you go a quick bag check you may recognize this location this is where tennis channel does most of their bag checks well at FYB we actually have a bags check because we have a ton of gear here you'll see that we have this enormous camera in the background we got another camera over there well this camera breaks down and goes into all these boxes here this big case right here is the uh, the tripod case for this big tripod there and then this camera here which is called a red one breaks down and gets put in all these various boxes these are two other tripod bags and over here we've got basically a bag full of all sorts of audio equipment I have to untangle this later that's not going to be very fun but we thought that'd be a cool little look inside of our operation and now what we're going to go do is we're actually going to so the way this video worked is he opens up you know it's the second video in the series thanks for the comments I'm at this tournament and then he goes into the authority with the gear I would have built in a better promise here an earlier promise telling people what they are going to get in this video so that little it was about a 30 second piece on the equipment uh, it, to me that, that was fine it wasn't too long will built in a little bit of the likability factor here it's not where he said it's not I'm gonna have to organize these this gear organize all these cables that's not going to be fun that sort of shows him being like a regular person again remember people are watching this and they are seeing will as a star because you know the all the authority that he's built of him being at these tournaments of him being near these top players of him having 26 million views on YouTube it's all building this authority so when you've built up this authority for yourself showing yourself as an average normal person makes you more likable and that part about not going to be fun is that was good I, I liked how he did that the thing is we're 52 seconds into the video and he really hasn't given us a real big promise here so we're going to continue right in here you're going to see I'm still not really loving the video yet head out on court and we're going to get Adam Siminski the tech genius behind FYB the reason all the video looks good is because of Adam so we're going to get Adam walking us through how this red one works that's going to be very cool so with that in mind let's head out to that segment so that was a big promise is his partner's gonna you know the technical genius genius is going to show us all about these cameras and how they work and as a tennis player I'm like okay what's in it for me who cares I, you know I, I want to know how to play tennis better I don't know how want to know how to shoot video better so so now he pops out onto the out onto the court and he talks about you know there's Rafael Nadal, Nadal hitting in the background who's like one of the greatest tennis players and so that's some great authority right there but then they go into a big long discussion about the camera so again I, I like the authority don't like the camera bit right here all right so we've got the camera put together and we're out filming Rafael Nadal and what we're gonna do is actually come over here and see Adam in action operating this camera because this thing is is pretty monstrous I don't know how it works it's got a lot of buttons so I'm just gonna kick it over to Adam why don't we uh, bring the camera this the whole bit of I don't a lot of buttons on this camera I don't don't know how it works again that's the humility the likability I like that but this next section here where he turns it over to Adam just drags it goes for it goes over for, here so you can see it from this vantage point with Rafa in the background and Adam take it away so uh, <clears throat> this camera is called a red one exactly so this next section just goes on and on and on it's it's about 90 seconds long with uh, his partner talking about this camera and frankly I don't care I'm a tennis player so this is like I said you know this isn't I don't see this video as being quite as strong again will had great great results and this video gets stronger soon um, you, you'll see soon I'm gonna skip ahead to like this 335 and uh, they they wrap it up and now this is where the video starts to get good. Technical segment of this video. Let's get back to the instruction. All right, so one quick preface before we head back to the studio. Today's lesson is on DNO. And you're going to love DNO because we're going to teach you some of the strategies and tactics the pros are using 
and how you can apply the same strategies and tactics to your game. Now make sure you watch the previous video where we talk about directionals, court positioning, court geometry, and SWAT because you have to understand that stuff to understand DNL. So this section is great. Will's back in his comfort zone. He's in his wheelhouse here. He talked about what was in the previous video, why, that, why you should go back and watch it if you haven't seen it. And now he's going to start um, basically for teaching and foreshadowing in here, telling you what you need to understand, specifics of what you're going to learn, and why it's important. So this is really powerful stuff. I just would have liked to have seen this be in the first 20 seconds. He could always do this be at the beginning and then take a little sidebar into the camera, but I would have liked to see this piece early on. Now, the great thing about this is he had that amazing first video, and people are probably, you know, if they watch that first video, they're hooked. And, they're, and since this is an internal launch, you, in general, when you're in, during an internal launch, you've got a little bit more time to hook someone because they already know you, you have already have a relationship with them, built some authority. If it was a joint venture launch where joint venture partners are sending you traffic, then you have to hook them very, very early with that authority. Now, Will, Will hooked people really hard with authority right in that, in that very first video. It was just fantastic. Again, I don't want to beat up Will too much because he is one of my best students and he's doing a great job in this launch. It's just this video isn't quite as strong as that first one. But you, in here, you're going to see him teaching and foreshadowing what, you, you know, why, what you're going to learn and why it's important. So with that in mind, let's head back to the studio and get on with today's lesson. So DNO stands for Defense Neutral Offense. And there's two key concepts you need to take away from DNO. First, it's to understand that you can be in one of these three states during a point. You can be on defense, you can be in a neutral rally, or you can be on offense, and we're going to specifically define how you know what state you're in in a second. So in other words... Now one thing I do want to point out, one subtlety here, when you're on camera, especially in these teaching situations, Will is spending a little too much, too mu too much time talking to the, the board. He could be pointing to these things and, and still turn to the camera, talking to the camera. Again, you know, I don't want to beat up Will too much because $168,000 is an amazing launch, um, but we're always looking for ways to get a little bit better. And frankly, Will has gotten better. This, you know, since then he's done a couple more launches and he continues to get better. DNO allows you to identify with a specific set of criteria what state you are in. Now second, you can think of DNO as a big toolbox of tactics you can use to transition from defense to neutral and neutral to offense. Now the other key concept here is this is not just some big toolbox and you kind of rummage around and pull out stuff at random. The tactics housed within DNO are specifically designed to transition from defense to neutral or neutral to offense. So in other words, you are going to know, well, I'm so Will just said, you are going to know. This is powerful stuff. He's telling you what he's going to teach you, and he's telling you why it's important. And this stuff is just magic for any tennis player. I mean, if you're a tennis player and you're watching this, you want to know. He, said, he tells me, you are going to know. Very, very powerful phrase. Then he tells you ex all through the section, he's telling you exactly what he's going to teach you, why it's important, and how you're going to use it. Very, very powerful stuff in a neutral rally right now, and this is the dynamic of the match given my SWOT analysis, this is the tool I need. So it allows you to identify the specific tactics you want to use based on, again, whether you're in a defensive situation, a neutral rally. So this is really powerful stuff in here. Just, you know, definitely I'm going to give you the entire video. Watch exactly how he does this throughout this section. Very, very powerful. So I'm going to skip forward up here till about 8.20. second criterion is court positioning and that simply means where you're positioned versus you know relative to your opponent and we already know what proper positioning is from one of the previous videos 
We already know what proper positioning is from one of the previous videos. So again, reinforcing that this is a series and driving people back to the first series. Because you can never assume that people are going to watch your entire series. Some people will come into the second, you know, PLC number two, they will have not seen PLC number one. So what he's doing here is he's driving them back to number one. He's creating that interest. He's giving them a reason to go back and watch that first one. Okay, so now we're going to jump forward. Lots and lots of great teaching in here, but we're going to jump all the way forward. I'm assuming you don't want to know all about how to win at tennis like I do, but we're going to jump forward here. This is where he starts to, now in PLC number one, at the end of PLC number one, he talked about how do you defeat a pusher and how irritating it is to play a pusher, and that's a certain type of a tennis player. In here, he pays that off. So that was at the end of the first video. And when you make a big promise like that, you definitely want to pay it off. So here at the end, or, or deep into, you know, 19 minutes, 48 seconds, into video number two, he pays off that promise from video, from video number one. Uh, we just talked about. All right, so it's the moment maybe many of you have been waiting for the how to beat a pusher strategy. Now, we're going to first start by defining a pusher. So, the moment you've been waiting for, and, and I just love that. I mean, really, if you look at it, it's a subtle play on anticipation. Because if you start telling people about how they are anticipating something or how they anticipated something, it just leads to more anticipation. And it's interesting that he waited until he's almost 20 minutes into this video to pay off that promise from that first video because I guarantee you he's got people following this launch and when he made that promise at the end of his first video there are people that came to this video just waiting to learn how to beat that pusher because it's a it's an irritating problem and he did a good job of irritating and agitating about it in his first video so now I'm going to skip to 2654 here this is where Will, he's so good at doing this authority piece in such a sort of likable, um, subtle way, but you're going to see him build more authority and start to set up the next video here. He did it, it's pretty late in this video. A big problem anymore. Back at Indian Wells, now you know what DNO is, now you have that tactic for beating a pusher. Speaking of pushers, let me point out someone who is most definitely not a pusher, Maria Sharapova right over there, one of the biggest hitters on the women's tour. So in the next video, what we're going to do is talk about how the pros think a little bit differently than everybody else, because it's one thing to understand DNO and have that toolbox of tactics, but how do you actually apply that stuff, and how do you make adjustments based on the ebb and the flow of the match? That's, a, that's one of those tactics that, or one of those abilities, rather, that really sets the pros apart from everybody else because the match doesn't always play out like he planned. So what he's doing here is, well, first of all, he points out Maria, and that's a big authority play. She's one of the top uh, female players on the tour. And now what he's doing is he's foreshadowing that next video. So we're coming to the close here. We're almost done with this video, and he is he's big time foreshadowing the next video and why you need to watch that next video. Plan. And when you're in a situation like that, you better adjust or you're going to lose the match. So that's what we're going to see in the next video. And then, of course, at the end of it, he has a call to action where he, again, asks specific questions, asks people to make a comment, and tells people he's going to be reading the comments and answering the questions. So I'm going to go back and play this, this section again. That's one of those tactics that, or one of those abilities, rather, that really sets the pros apart from everybody else because the match doesn't always play out like you plan and when you're in a situation like that you better adjust or you're going to lose the match so that's what we're going to see in the next video now in closing with this video please let me know first of all what you think of DNO in the comments below and what your specific favorite tactic is because everybody has at least one favorite tactic whether it's I'm going to play to my forehand and hit a lot of those or I'm going to try and run my opponent around hit to the open court, and so on. So let me know what, uh, what you think of DNO and what your favorite tactic is. I will be reading those comments, looking forward to that, and I will be jumping in and answering any questions you might have. So with that, I'm going to sign off, but I will see you in the next video. So this, again, you know, a very, very strong close. I liked the close. Um, I thought the teaching section in the middle was very powerful. 
uh, didn't love the open of this video. I think he should have gotten to the the promise of what this actual video is about and what what was what's in it for tennis players. I think if he would have opened there with that, it would have been stronger. But again, that first video was so so good. And, you know, I think and no one you know in most launches often video. You know, if you're gonna have a great video, have it be your first video. And if you're gonna have a weak video, have it be your second video. You know, so it, you really want a strong first video and a strong third video um, the first video is probably the most important and the second one is probably the least important so if you're gonna have one not be great this is the one to not be great and again there's so much good in this video it's just that one section about the video gear I probably would have left it out or I would have put it deeper after I made my initial promise but you know will did a great job here is doing a great job with this launch and that's why he did really well but I hope you're seeing no launch is perfect and every time I go back and look at one of my videos it's like oh yeah I wish I'd done this I wish I had done that so there is video number two you saw why how he you know he basically in that first video he set up the opportunity in the second video in this one he is setting up the third video and the third video is how to take this stuff and bring it into a match so he's leading very seamlessly from one video to another did a great job with that